talk about how great it is and you can talk about how terrible it is and no, we no, even no, each no, other no, up. No, no, no. Okay, no, we can't do the people a disservice. Okay, we need to... <laughs> I'll get into a fight with you. I'll do it. <laughs> but, um... Now we're gonna go. We're gonna actually start on time. And All right, yeah. Maybe that, now this is how you start a game. Run up down tilt. Yeah. But, <gasps> but, he but, died. But, did he hit him off of the cipher? What? I don't even. Yeah. Know. No, he broke it. I didn't know back he broke, broke it. the cipher like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, he back it. So pretty much what happened was he back the cipher. And I, I think Jeremiah already had buffered air dodge into ledge after doing the cipher, right? To take the ledge immediately. And it was it was broken so fast that he buffered air dodge in the blast zone. And he lost his stock for that. So like right now, oh uh Man, I have to stock, you're to death. <laughs> I have to learn the accidental buffer metagame. Uh wow. I feel like that's something that is uh, kind of relevant on Wi-Fi. But anyway, so even though Jeremiah took that really unfortunate early uh, early stock loss, he's managing to do very consistent damage, and Snake is a character who does not struggle to kill. Um, he has so many kill moves, he has so many ways of literally explosively ending people, uh, wow. closing things out. Oh, that was very He's chasing. He's chasing Jeremiah all over the stage, and in spots where Kirby can definitely afford to chase him. So, um, you know, you, it looks like he might have a little bit of matchup knowledge, or um, he's just trying to press his lead as best as he can. All right, great evasion, avoiding the uh, the Nikita there. And now he's at 182%. So, like, he's taking hits, but the hits he's taking are not the ones that will kill. And wow. Yo, yo oh, back here from back here? Was that like a grown man to a child? <laughs> okay, this could be really big, knocking him off stage. I like that. He's recovering high, knowing that, you know, like, this game started with that low recovery getting super punished. Yeah, and I'm, man, I'm really liking this waiting coming out from Oats. He's putting Snake above him and letting Snake react to him instead of the other way around. Um, uh, you know, right now, Jeremiah's just trying to get a little bit of footing, throwing out a lot of these grenades, a lot of these up these. Um, um you doing okay, buddy? Yeah, you died. Yeah, you died. Yeah. Yeah. Smart to use the Nair there. I think that was... Uh, barring like a position back air, I think Nair was the only aerial that would have killed. Um, so yeah, just capitalizing on a fortunate situation for him. That's going to be Oates taking game one very decisively, but you have to keep in mind that because of some of the, uh, you know, the issues with SDing, it can't really be used as a proper metric for how this set is going to go. Yeah, uh, but one thing that you can say about this is that um, Oats is setting the tone early for uh, early aggression, and it seems like the game plan he's going to try to employ is to make Jeremiah feel as uncomfortable as possible, and make him you know react to what he's doing. Now we could we're going to see in the next game where the Jeremiah can change that a little bit, maybe not dying in the first ten seconds of the game. Yeah. Um, we'll see if you know he can adapt a little bit to uh, Oats. Yeah. Now, one thing that I'm curious to see more of is Snake doing those really high recoveries. Kirby has the ability with those multiple jumps to stall and kind of wait for him to descend, which is something that a lot of characters can't really do. You know, they have to predict where and when Snake is going to fall. So he was managing to, Oates was managing to use that pretty well in that last game. But, you know, the fact that this one has started off on a much more even footing, I think he's going to have to rely on those juggles and nailing that sort of thing a lot more. Yeah, oh, and he, yeah, and he got that sticky um, on top of Kirby's head. Uh, yeah, and you can already tell uh, Jeremiah is not going to try to fight Kirby. You don't want to try to fight this character. Um, this, this this is a character that has really good up close buttons. Jeremiah, I mean, oh, excuse me, Oates was already walking up and down to him on the shield. Oh. Yo, the reactive up B. Yo, we got, we got cloud strats out here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> does it does it need to be optimal if it if it if it uh, looks cool? If it works, it works, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but right now Jeremiah's in that lead. Yeah. Actually, that situation uh, was up the optimal. I guess it technically would have done more damage than like a smash yo, the, attack. Yo, that yo that grenade extended the forward smash hurt, uh, hitbox. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. That's that that's just par for the course in this 
like with Snake in general. The extra, oh, nice job getting the up tilt there. But yeah, the extra hit, it's like a big factor. The fact that sometimes you have little bits of extra hit lag. Sometimes it works out in the Snake's favor. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but right now we have super even game between these two. Um, and with a slight lead on... Oh, okay, no, there is no lead. This is not the sort of thing that you can really glean any sort of meaningful information in terms of who has to approach. But nonetheless, Oates is constantly in his face. I haven't seen him leave boxing range for like 30 seconds. Yeah, and I mean, th I mean, honestly, this is how he's going to have to play it. Snake as Snake as a range character, and especially the way Jeremiah is playing right now, literally not trying to interact with him. Um, this is what he has to do. He has to push the envelope. Um, and with that being said, he tried to maybe push it a little bit too hard, doing a stone like that right in front of Snake's foot. Uh, and, you know, Jeremiah taking the lead right now. Mm. Yeah, inter yeah, interesting there. Uh, I'm not from Jeremiah doing that out of field with Chikrata stuff. Air to air with Kirby. Um, yeah, right now it seems like Jeremiah's cooking them. <laughs> yeah, Kirby, like, this is one of those situations that is really difficult for Kirby because taking a stock against a snake who has a lead like this, um, the main way, I mean, you see him going for back air a lot. Oh, I love that cute, just like getting that phantom footstool on his shield, but definitely didn't. Okay, finally manages to find a forward smash, but you can see that getting those openings to close out stocks. Definitely something he's kind of struggling with at the moment, and he has to do it one more time before uh, he can claim a game, too. Yeah, and I'm liking how Jeremiah was turtling, it, right? Um, so, you know, in order to, to hit Snake's shield sometimes, um, you're gonna you risk the, the point of hitting his uh, grenade. So, a lot of the times, Oat was actually trading with him earlier. Earlier, no, stop! Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Thing, you died! <laughs> Okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. I was so convinced. I was so convinced that was going to be the end. I was like, forget Lion now. Oh, yeah. That's like right, two for there. two on. Two for two for stone into foot true combo. Yeah, I, so there was a couple points at the end there where um, Oates was going for these forward smashes when there were grenades present. And I wonder if that's like a calculated thing. Like right here, he forward smashes the grenade knowing that he can't get punished for a kill because the grenade will explode. And he, uh, so that might be sort of like an option coverage thing. Just like, let me forward smash here. If he ends up dropping shield, it, you know, this forward smash will take very easily, possibly could have taken the stock. And the the risk of it would be putting it, getting put in a bad position, which admittedly that is why he lost his stock ultimately. But nonetheless, I wonder if that's something that was consciously done on his part, or whether that was uh, you know just a happy little accident. I'm not gonna lie, I just feel like Oates is swinging. But um, the thing is, you do have to swing a little bit uh, as Kirby, especially against a character like Snake, who can. Be a little hard to take stocks against if you're not edge guarding him because Nick is a pretty heavy guy. So him being aggressive like that with the forward smashes isn't really that big of a deal. Um but I'm just more concerned about some of these stones and I understand being aggressive, but overextending yourself like that, especially at a deficit, the risk reward isn't really in your favor when you do that. But no that being yeah. said, Count it oh. Count. Okay. So Jeremiah did very well in that last game, but one thing that I kind of want to see from him a little more is grenade conversions, and I realize it can be hard to hit Kirby, you know, he's a very small target, but definitely uh, Oates is getting hit by a lot of grenades, and I wasn't seeing a lot of sort of follow-ups into it, uh, which could take stocks extremely early, so maybe he's going to try and be a little more consistent with that into this game three, because, you know, he did lose game one, uh, they're completely even at the moment. And let's see. Yeah, good and good stuff by Jeremiah keeping his jump. Um, because if he used that jump early, that was his stock. And right now, um, it just seems like Oates is trying to find his offense. Jeremiah is kind of settled at holding grenades and letting Kirby try to hit his shield, you know, as much as he can. And he's just getting called out for all of these jump-ins, Kirby with not the best aerial acceleration is uh, taking pretty hard hits for it. No, oh man, he can't even, that, 
you know, could have possibly been a big conversion, but because of the presence of the grenades, he wasn't able to really get much off of it. Okay, trying to put up some pressure, but pressuring Snake is so hard when there's just always a grenade on the ground or in hand. And that's just going to inevitably explode. That's another stock on oh, that stop. one. Just okay. absolutely commanding for Jeremiah. Man, okay. So he definitely just tried to press A into the ground so many times. And the problem is, is what I was saying earlier. Jeremiah is holding grenades and waiting for Oates to hit his shield. And when Oates hits his shield, he's also hitting the grenade most of the time. And at a deficit like this, um, yeah, you might have to mix it up a little bit. Maybe throw in some grab if you can. Because... Hitting his shield, hitting Snake's shield like that is not netting you in that pocket. Um, it, it would it possibly be, for instance, uh, going for the command grab. You don't often see, because of how committal it is, uh, Kirby's inhale used that way. But if Jeremiah is consistently shielding as, uh, you know, Oates is approaching the ground, that might at least scare him from shielding so much. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. with Kirby's poor air acceleration, he can't get away from these Nikitas. Ah, yeah, and nice coverage ah, from Jeremiah. Yeah, and honestly, all Oates could have done in that situation was snap to ledge, and he didn't, and um, that was stuck. And um, pretty fast, actually, pretty fast game coming out of that game. Yeah, the 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 big culprit of that was the second stock was just so consistently Jeremiah was just playing it really, really well. There wasn't any distinct moment that set it apart. It was just commanding neutral really knowing his advantage just mm -hmm. forcing the approach and it's the sort of thing where I, in in game four uh we see jeremiah with another lead i think it's gonna be it's gonna be a real uphill battle for oats to manage to make a comeback yeah um right now jeremiah is playing really patient waiting in his shield Man. with a grenade waiting for it to get hit um, and now this is something where Oates is going to have to dig down deep and try to figure out the, puzzle, the missing puzzle piece to this um, matchup right now. Yeah, and um, sometimes it, it, is, it, it escapes me. Snake's damage output is so, so high. He took 54% in like the first five seconds of the match or something. And that means he's playing from behind by quite a bit. Uh, I think that, uh, yeah, you can see he's looking to make a big big edge guard um and i actually kind of like this aggression Ugh. that time oh that time it actually works out yeah mm -hmm. no he's he's really chasing him up there he's trying to push his incentive yes. and it pays off for him yes. yes and um yeah and that's a situation where kirby can't afford to be aggressive when snake is in the air um snake even though snake can go high and miss the recovery in the air he's kind of vulnerable and um and you saw Jeremiah panic a little bit, and Oates kind of took advantage of that. So good stuff on him. Now, I'm wondering if uh, Oates does know about that up throw um, little interaction that Devin had mentioned earlier, because there were quite a few times where he was going, he went for forward throw, and the grenade exploded mid throw. Um, I'm not sure if that would have been the sort of timing where he could have gone for an up throw for a really early stock, but. You know, maybe he should try to go for something gimmicky. Ooh. Granted, honestly, Yo, just barely. he's cleaned up what? his play. That's what it is this time around. He realized what he was doing wrong last time. I think a big part of that was his pressure just wasn't that wasn't nearly as good as it is right now. He was approaching from like trying to approach hard from mid range, and now he is getting up close and oh, okay, uh, yeah. it's just working out for him really well. And I feel like also what we're seeing is it's very important for Oats to get off to an early lead. Because then the onus is on Jeremiah's approach, and it seems it just seems like from the games that Oates won, uh, Jeremiah isn't the best at approach. He's very good at defensive play, but when it comes to opening up a character, especially Kirby, he's not doing a very good job of, about it. And right now, you can see him struggling at the other side of stage, trying to do something, and Oates is kind of just like, "Yeah, I'm here, uh, fishing for my forward air." Yeah, I, that was such good spacing uh, from Jeremiah on that down tilt, though, knowing that he has the superior range, and he manages to ultimately convert that into a stock. And all of a sudden, it's even because Snake's damage output is just that absurd. Ooh, and yeah, and Oats got really, it, he got really impatient after he lost that stock. He just said, "I'm holding forward. It's my time. It's I need to win this game." And now, um. He just took 100% my whole 
Oh, yeah, no, he, you can see he's trying to get in there. Oh, and no, that was just no. rinse repeat from oh. Jeremiah. Fight just back. mixing up how he was stuffing the approach, but every time stuffed it so consistently. So that's going to be Jeremiah after a really rough game one. Manages to reverse 3-0, putting him as the other uh, competitor in winner's finals, I believe. Yeah, uh, that last doc was kind of like when when Bart Simpson does the spinny arms and starts moving forward. <laughs> Honestly, um, it also reminds me of when Bart Simpson is just like, good old rock, nothing beats the hat. Yeah. Which is not meant to be an insult or anything. But yeah, it's no. like, you could see that he, consistently Jeremiah knew what uh, Oates' game plan was and just was answering it every single time. Yeah, it just seems like when it comes to the aggression, there wasn't really an off switch for Oates. And even when he had the lead, it was kind of just like, you know, you have the lead, um, you know, it's on Jeremiah to try to catch you. And this is actually a, a conversation that was had on the internet today, whether if you're camping while you're losing, is that good? Now, if you can, if you manage to trick somebody or wear somebody down to the point where they're just running at you at a disadvantage, right? You can take that, right? But um, yeah, so you know. here's the thing. If you're camping when you're losing and you're getting damage in and you're managing to close the gap and your opponent isn't able to answer it, then it's 100% the right call. But if you're camping and the opponent's just like, I'm gonna stand here and shield. I'm not gonna let anything happen. Then that's when you get timed out. I always 